Shalom, on high Christ bless, I'm Brother Ira, and today's topic that we're going over is, are you a virgin? In the scriptures, virgin has many different meanings. Yes, a virgin is a woman who has not had sex, but in the scriptures, you have young virgins, meaning this is a woman of marriageable age. And sometimes, a young virgin can be called a damsel or a maid because of her virginity. But nowhere in the book of God, which is these scriptures, will you find a child that is not of age being called a young virgin. But she would be a damsel or a maid or a little child. Now, we live in here in America when they got sex trafficking, illegal prostitution, legal prostitution, ungodly marriages. By ungodly marriages, we're talking about underage marriage. In some states with the parental consent, they can marry their daughters off at the age of 16. Psalm 15. Psalm 14, Psalm 13, all the way down to the age of 12. Yes, that's called pedophilia. In the Bible, it's called inordinate affection. So if they say in God we trust, you can't trust in God, obviously, because God said you have to be 20 years old to become an adult. Now, I'm going to show you a video in the mind state of how America thinks. Find the word pimp in your own terms. A, a pimp? In its simplest term, is is a man that brings women, uh, brings men or women to girls for sex. Okay, so in the simplest term, I'm a pimp, but but I have a license. I have a business license to do this. So you're it's, a legal pimp. I, I'm, a, I'm a legal pimp, absolutely. But in the street vernacular, and in in, in in most people's uh, thoughts, a pimp is a guy that goes to, to Kansas City grabs underage girls who run away, fills them up with drugs, and owns them and makes them, hauls them around to Oakland, Las Vegas, the sex, sexual cesspool of America. So when, when you legalize something, who do you take out of the business? You take the underage girls out because every girl here has to go down and get a business license, be fingerprinted, photographed. They run the federal check on them. Who else can't get in the business? The pimps. This business, the prostitution business worldwide, is a dirty, disgusting, drug-ridden, exploitive, disease-ridden business till you legalize it. And when you make it legal, everything changes. The whole game changes. If you ain't trying to fix the problem, then you part of it. First, he's speaking against all the wickedness that's going on in America, but then he flip around and say, well, if you legalize it, it's okay. That don't make no kind of sense. That's just like being outraged about child pornography but at the same time, y'all still got laws up where you can marry a 12 year old. What's the difference? So that's, that right there is showing you my state of America. They think they got the license to sin. He said you need a business license. Well, God didn't give you no license to sin. I'm gonna show you. It's the book of Sirach or Ecclesiasticus, chapter 15 and verse 20. He have commanded no man to do wickedly. Neither hath he given any man license to sin. So there you have it. God ain't gave America no license to sin. It's just wicked like that. They got a spirit of prostitution on them, a spirit of whoredom on them, a spirit of pedophilia on them. It's called inordinate affection. So the class is about are you a virgin? And we got to find out just how old a woman had to be to be an adult. And this message goes out to all the so-called blacks, African Americans, Hispanics, uh, Native Indians whose father are of Negro and Indian descent, and to the rest of the 12 tribes of Israel that scatter amongst this whole earth. This message goes out to you. Primarily, most of these young virgins, which is women of marriage with ages, is scattered throughout the United States, most definitely in Central America and South America, because that's where the most wickedness also is going on too, even though it's going on around the whole globe. But we finna get into a couple of scriptures and show you what God says when a man or a woman has become an adult and at what age does it start. So this is the book of Numbers, chapter 1, and we're going to start at verse 2. It says, Take ye the sum of all the congregation of the children of Israel after their families, by the house of their fathers, with the number of their names, every male by their poles. Verse 3, it says, From twenty years old and upward, all that are able to go forth to war in Israel, thou and Aaron shall number them by their armies. So there you have it. At the age of 20, you're supposed to be able to go off to war for Israel. So at the age of 20, that's when you become a man. That's when you can go off to war. Now we're going to go to another scripture showing you and including the women also. This is the book of Exodus chapter 30 and verse 12. When thou takest the psalm of the children of Israel after their number, then shall they give every man a ransom for his soul unto the Lord when thou numbers them. 
that there be no plague among them when thou numbers them. This they shall give. Every one that passeth among them that are numbered half a shekel after the shekel of the sanctuary. A shekel is twenty gerahs, and half shekel shall be the offering of the Lord. Verse 14. Every one that passeth among them that are numbered from twenty years old and above shall give an offering unto the Lord. It says, everyone that's numbered among them that's twenty years old and above, you're supposed to be able to give an offering unto the Lord because the Most High God is not a respect of person. And you should be able to meet the standards. Whether rich or poor, you should be able to meet the requirements of what the Most High God is asking from you when you reach 20 years old. And here we have another scripture. This is the book of Numbers, chapter 14 and verse 29, showing you that you got to be 20 years old and above to be an adult in Israel. Your carcasses shall fall in this wilderness, and all that were numbered of you, according to your whole number, from twenty years old and upward, which have murmured against me. Doubtless ye shall not come into the land, concerning which I swear to make you dwell therein, save Caleb the son of Jephunneh, and Joshua the son of Nun. But your little ones, which you said should be a prey, them will I bring in, and they shall know the land which ye have despised. But there you have it. 20 years old and above, they always murmuring. Talking about the little children gonna get ate up. They gonna be for prey. But God said, no, they gonna get to that land which you despise. So everybody from 20 years old and upward, he said, your carcasses is gonna fall because Israel, you adults, is a rebellious house. Now those are just a couple examples showing you that you gotta be 20 years old and above to be an adult in Israel. But because we went into captivity, we have became subject to the heathens. We go by their laws. We go by their ideologies. They say you can be an adult at 18. That is not true. Therefore, the children of Israel, you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and native Indians, you suffer violence. You suffer wickedness. You suffer whoredom, sex trafficking, illegal prostitution, and ungodly marriages, which is inordinate affection. Now, I'm going to show you some of the curses that's poured upon us right now. Watch this. The sex slave trade is a global business, and the American market is dominated by pimps and traffickers from one Mexican state called Tlaxcala. No place in the world sends more sex slaves to the U.S., and at the center of the trade is one small city of just 10,000 people. Its name is Tenancingo. Tenancingo has spawned frankly, a cottage industry of victimization. Uh, it's disturbing on many, many levels. They're family-led organizations that specialize in trafficking young girls, prostituting them in Mexico, bringing them to the U.S., forcing them into prostitution here. The Tenancingo ring has spread throughout the U.S., from the border towns up through Texas and California, from Houston to Atlanta and Miami, and up the East Coast, all the way to New York. And that right there is an end result of breaking God's laws. If we would just keep the commandments and do what God say, we would never have to go through none of that. Let me show you. This is the book of Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 29. It says, Do not prostitute thy daughter to cause her to be your whore, lest the land fall to whoredom and the land become full of wickedness. God said, Don't prostitute your daughter. Some of these sex trafficking, illegal prostitution schemes is family ran. And all that's taking place down in Central America and South America and up here in modern day Babylon. We don't supposed to be prostituting our daughters. On to the next scripture. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 23 and verse 17. It says, There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel, nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel. So there you have it right there saying, You Israelite women, you so called African American women, you can't be out here selling your body for sex because God said you're set apart, you're a holy people, you're the best on the planet. You cannot be a whore in Israel. Neither you young men, you can't be a sodomite. I mean, you can't be a homosexual. You can't be a gigolo. God said you are holy and set apart people. Let them heathens do what they want to do. But as you see, our young virgins, which is a woman of marriage but age, is selling themselves for sex. They done got caught up in sex trafficking, illegal prostitution, and ungodly marriages. And I'm going to touch on them ungodly marriages. Those are laws that America has established, not God. The children of Israel, we go by a whole different kind of rule book. And it's right here in front of us. On to the next. Prostitution is legal here, but the age of consent is 18. Donde llegan chinos, llegan brasileros, europeos, extranjeros, de todo. Toda clase de hombres. 
buscando niñas menores de edad? Ah, menores de edad, ya está más. No le gustan las niñas de 16, 17, sino de, de 11, de 10, de 9. Sí. Yo, yeah. Them boys on 19 and 11 year old. They don't want men, women of marriage by age. They want little children. They want little kids. They want little maids. Cause they into pedophilia. That's inordinate affection. I'm finna read that to you. This is the book of Colossians chapter 3 and verse 5. It says, Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. Fornication, uncleanliness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness which is idolatry, for which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. And that's going on in Central America and South America. Them is Israelites and other rich people coming from Babylon to come have sex with little girls. They're not looking for young virgins. They're looking for little bitty children. So God says that every man is tempted when he's drawn away by his own lust. In our day and age, in our case, nobody is keeping under God's laws. But everybody is driven away by their own lust. This is the book of James, chapter 1 and verse 13. It says, let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted of he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed in this day and age people are enticed by little children they are underage marrying these little girls and i got a couple of clips that i'm gonna show you and prove to you that these men are enticed by little children and they lusting after little girls but this class is a young virgin but i'm just pointing out to you what these men think in their mind because a young virgin is a woman of marriage age but a woman who is not a marriage age which is a little child or a little maid or a damsel or a maid she is an actual little child who is not a young virgin watch this él te me decía que tenía 34 años pues yo hace cuando él vino ahí en de la, de la mamá de él ahí fue donde lo conocí y cuando él, de él vino aquí a la casa Yo tenía, cuando salí a estudiar, tenía como oh, 11 años. Ahí fue donde los de los casamos. Y no fue el, el que me dejó con él. Cuatro meses de embarazo. Me decía que no era, no era hijo de él. Uh -huh. As you see, is many, many more inordinate relationship that's going on that God doesn't approve of in the earth today. And according to the scripture, you got to be 20 years old and above to be an adult in Israel. And what you're seeing is the Israelites that are scattered in Central and South America. And they've been given over to inordinate affection. They are marrying little bitty girls and they're not searching for young virgins, which are women of marital age. If the laws of God was in effect, then none of this would be taking place. These are the children of Israel, and the men don't know who they are. Therefore, they're giving over to whoredom. They're giving over to lust, and they marrying underage women. If you don't believe me, watch this. Una niña menor de 14 años, las niñas eh, son fáciles de persuadir, están en total vulnerabilidad, tanto de la violencia sexual como de decidir tener una pareja. Tampoco decide el embarazo.
So there you have it. That's another case of inordinate affection. You got a grown man that wanted to marry a little child and he's not looking for a young virgin, which is a woman of marriage age. Hey, in order to understand the biblical definition of what a virgin is, you got to understand what a virgin is according to the context of the scripture when it's talking about a virgin. Because you have a young virgin, which is a woman of marriageable age. She can't be called a damsel or a maid because of her virginity. But then you have a little child or a little one or a maid or a damsel who would never be called a young virgin because she's not old enough yet. So we're going to go into the scripts. We're going to get some examples of a young virgin, which would be a woman that's above 20 years old. Lamentations 1 and verse 18. The Lord is righteous for I rebelled against his commandment. Here, I pray you all people and behold my sorrow. My virgins and my young men are going into captivity. So in the context of the scripture, they weren't indicated as children or little ones or little maids, but that these virgins and young men were of marriageable age and above the ages of 20. The book of Lamentations chapter 2 and verse 21. The young and the old lie on the ground in the streets. My virgins and my young men are fallen by the sword. Thou hast slain them in the day of thine anger. Thou hast killed and not pity. So in the context of the scripture, there's a colon after the word streets, showing you that these are not children, but that these are young virgins and young men of marriageable age, and that they were above the ages of 20, and that these are not children. That's the chapter 2, verse 1 through 4. After these things, when the wrath of King Ahasuerus was appeased, he remember Vashti and what she had done and what was decreed against her. Then said the king's servant that ministered unto him, Let there be fair young virgins sought for the king, and let the king appoint officers in all the provinces of his kingdom, that they may gather together all the fair young virgins unto Shushan the palace, to the house of the women, unto the custody of Hege, the king's chamberlain, and keeper of the women, and let their things for purification be given them, and let the maiden which pleaseth the king be queen instead of Vashti, and the thing pleased the king and he did so so there you have a young virgin being called a maiden and that maiden will become a queen and that should be 20 years old and above and she's a marriageable age deuteronomy 22 verse 13 through 17 if any man take a wife and go in unto her and hate her and give occasions of speech against her and bring up an evil name upon her and say i took this woman and when i came to her i found her not a maid then shall the father of the damsel and her mother take and bring forth the tokens of the damsel's virginity unto the elders of the city and the gate and the damsel's father shall say unto the elders, I gave my daughter unto this man to wife, and he hated her. And lo, he hath given occasions of speech against her, saying, I found not thy daughter a maid, and yet these are the tokens of my daughter's virginity. And they shall spread the cloth before the elders of the city. So in verse 14, they called a young virgin a maid. In verse 15, it went from being called a maid to being called a damsel. So it's showing you that a young virgin can be called a damsel or a maid because of her virginity. Okay, so there you have it. Those was a couple of examples showing you that a young virgin can be called a maid or a damsel because of her virginity. Now we're going to get into some scriptures showing the difference between a young virgin and an actual little child. Second Kings chapter 5, 2 through 3. And the Syrians had gone out by companies and had brought away captive out of the land of Israel, a little maid, and she waited on Naaman's wife. And she said unto her mistress, Will God my Lord will whip the prophet that is in Samaria, for he will recover him of his leprosy. So there you have an Israelite child to the Naaman's wife, but the most high God of Israel will heal her husband of his leprosy. And she was called a little maid, not a young virgin. Luke chapter 8, verse 41 through 42, and Luke 8, 52 through 54. And behold, there came a man named Jairus, and he was a ruler of the synagogue, and he fell down at Jesus' feet and besought him that he would come into his house. For he had one only daughter, about 12 years of age, and she lay a dying. But as he went, the people thronged him, and all wept and bewailed her. But he said, Weep not, she is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed him to scorn, knowing that she was dead. And he put them all out and took her by the hand and called, saying, Maid, arise. So that was a little child, not of marriage age. She was 12 years old, being called a maid. And she was not a young virgin, but a little child. Mark chapter 5, verse 22 through 23 and 5 and 39. And behold, there come of one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet and besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter, live at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay thy hands on her, that she may be healed, and she shall live. And when he was come in, he said unto them, Why make ye this ado and weep? The damsel is not dead for sleeping. So there you have the Christ calling Jairus' little daughter, which is the age of 12, a damsel, because she is not of marital age. And she is not a young virgin, but that she was a little daughter, she is a little child, and she was called a damsel. Matthew chapter 9, verse 18, 23 to 25. While he spake these things unto them, behold, there came a certain ruler and worshipped him, saying, My daughter is even now dead, but come and lay thy hand upon her, and she shall live. 
And when Jesus came into the ruler's house and saw the minstrels and the people making a noise, he said unto them, Give place, for the maid is not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn. And when the people were put forth, he went in and took her by the hand, and the maid arose. So Christ called Jairus' little daughter, which is 12 years old, a maid and not a young virgin, because she is a child and is physically a virgin that has not had sex and is not of marriage but age, but she is a child. All right, so there you have it. Those are just a couple of precepts showing you the difference between a young virgin, which is a woman of marriage but age, and 20 years old and above, versus an actual little child, which is somebody that you should not be dealing with. And that's why it's important to know the commandments of God so you can escape willful sin, you can escape judgment. Now watch this clip. These men are part of the city's main gang, La Oficina. La Oficina control these streets. Their business is drugs, extortion, and the sex trade. They spoke to young girls. They start talking to them. They invite them to a party. A couple of minutes later, the girls give them their phone numbers. Half an hour later, I meet up with the gang members. Esas chicas tenían 14, tenían 14 años. ¿Ellas sabían en lo que se estaban metiendo? No, no, no sabían. No. no, porque ahí se juega con la inocencia. Pero la gente que va a mirar esto va a decir, ¿cómo que están haciendo eso con la, con la chica? ¿Qué piensas tú de eso? No, a nosotros no nos interesa el sentimiento. Sí, sí. Si el sentimiento no hay, no... Eso no hay corazón. No, eso no. ¿Para qué? Es una empresa, eso es la ideología. Nosotros esto es un negocio. Es un negocio que surge de la calle y... So there you have it. It's important to keep watch, keep being vigilant. The devil is like a warning lion seeking whom he may devour. The good news is that if you keep in God's commandment, you're going to make it to the kingdom of heaven if you endure until the end. And we're going to finish this out with the book of Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 1. Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. So with that being said, we want to give all praise to the Most High God and His Son, Christ, for letting the scriptures come out. And with that, I say, Shalom.